Imagine a world where you look around and everywhere you look you see overlays providing information as if you had a heads-up display in a video game. With augmented reality that world isn't very far away and the incredible possibilities are almost limitless. Our environments could be adapted and digitally enhanced by having this ever-present overlay on the city. One of the defining characteristics of augmented reality is that it's subjective, i.e. like everybody can see their own version of the city, and it means that everything is customizable. Augmented reality is a live, direct, or indirect view of a physical, real-world environment whose elements are augmented by computer-generated sensory inputs such as sound, video, graphics, or GPS data. Augmented reality is related to a more general concept called mediated reality in which a computer modifies a view of reality. As a result, the technology functions by enhancing one's current perception of reality. In contrast, virtual reality replaces the real world with the simulated one. Augmentation is essentially real time, and it can incorporate elements such as sports scores on TV during a match, and with the help of advanced augmented reality technologies such as computer vision and object recognition, the information about the surrounding world of the user becomes interactive and digitally malleable. Information about the environment and its objects is overlaid on the real world. This information can be virtual or real. One example is seeing real, sensed, or measured information such as electromagnetic radio waves overlaid in the exact alignment with where they are in actual space. Augmented reality brings out the components of the digital world into a person's perceived real world. The first functional AR systems that provided immersive mixed reality experiences for users were invented in the early 1990s, starting with the Versal Fixtures Lab system developed at the UNIS Air Force Armstrong Labs in 1992. However, the field truly began much earlier than this. While you can easily go further back in time and find examples in which informational overlays were layered on top of the physical world, the first examples of the physical world combined with computer-generated information occurred in the 1960s. Ivan Sutherland can be credited with starting the field that would eventually turn into both virtual and augmented reality. In 1968, he created the first head-mounted display, called the Sword of Damocles. The display included the use of head tracking and see-through optics. However, this headset was technically virtual reality, not augmented reality. Augmented reality would need the advances in computing that occurred in the 1980s and 1990s that would allow it to truly become its own field and it wouldn't be until 1992 that the field of augmented reality really emerged. The year 1992 marked the birth of the term augmented reality. This term first appeared in the work of Caudel and Mizelli at Boeing, as they sought to assist workers at an airplane factory by displaying wire bundle assembly schematics in a see-through HMD. Progress continued in 1994, as Andre State at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill presented a compelling medical augmented reality application capable of letting a physician observe a fetus directly within a pregnant patient. Even though the accurate registration of computer graphics on top of a deformable object, such as a human body, remains a challenge today, this work hinted at the power of augmented reality for medicine and other delicate tasks. In 1995, Rekimoto and Nagao created the first true, albeit tethered, handheld augmented reality display. Their Navicam was connected to a workstation, but was outfitted with a forward-facing camera. From the video feed, it could detect color-coded markers in the camera image and display information on a video see-through view. In 1996, Hans Kaufmann and Schmalstig developed Studios Tube, the first collaborative augmented reality system. With this system, multiple users could experience virtual objects in the same shared space. Each user had a tracked HMD and could see correct stereoscopic images from an individual viewpoint. Unlike multi-user virtual reality, natural communication cues such as voice, body posture, and gestures were not affected in Studios Tube because the virtual content was added to a conventional situation in a minimally obtrusive way. One of the showcase applications was a geometry course which was successfully tested with actual high school students. In 1997, Fenner's group developed the first augmented reality system that could be used outdoors, the Turing Machine at Columbia University. The Turing Machine uses a see-through head-mounted display with GPS and orientation tracking. Delivering mobile 3D graphics via this system required a backpack holding a computer, various sensors, 
and an early tablet display for the computer to input data to. Just one year later, in 1998, Bruce Thomas and Wayne Pikarski published their work on construction of an outdoor AR navigation system called Map in the Hat. Its successor, TINMYTH, an acronym for This Is Not Map in the Hat, developed into a well-known experimental platform for augmented reality. This platform was used for advanced applications such as 3D surveying, but is most famous for delivering the first outdoor augmented reality game, AR Quake. This game, which is a port of the popular first-person shooting application Quake to Tinmyth, places the user in the midst of a zombie attack in a real live parking lot. Until 1999, no augmented reality software was available outside specialized research labs. This situation changed when Cato and Mark Billingshurst released AR Toolkit, the first open source software platform for augmented reality. It featured a 3D tracking library using black and white fidgetals, which could easily be manufactured on a laser printer. The clever software design, in combination with the increased availability of webcams, made AR Toolkit widely popular. After 2000, cellular phones and mobile computing began evolving rapidly. This presented a whole new world of opportunities for augmented reality. And in 2003, Daniel Wagner and Schmalstig presented the first handheld augmented reality system running autonomously on a personal digital assistant or a PDA, a precursor to today's smartphones. One year later, The Invisible Train, a multiplayer handheld augmented reality game was experienced by thousands of visitors at the SIGGRAPH Emerging Technology show floor. It took several years, until 2008 in fact, for the first truly usable natural feature tracking system on smartphones to be introduced. This work became the ancestor of the popular Vaforia toolkit for AR developers. Unfortunately, augmented reality began to stagnate around this time, especially commercially. Connects Toys, Legos, Jack Link's Beef Jerky, and Best Buy all experimented with the technology with limited success. However, that has all changed with the rapid development of smartphones, as they are now handheld augmented reality devices in a myriad of ways. The immensely popular app Pokemon Go has breathed some life back into AR. While the field isn't in full stride yet, it is expected to increase revenue from $5 billion to more than $160 billion by 2020, as companies such as Apple are looking to get back into using the technology. But AR is really where it's at for Apple, and we're going to see this over the course of the next three to five to ten years with so many new products. So while there is still a decent amount of cloudiness regarding the future of AR, one thing is certain. Augmented reality has gained a foothold in our lives, and chances are pretty high that it won't let go.